in this world. We say we are united, more like divided, cooped up in our prejudices. It takes a village to raise a child, or so we think. But what if the child is shut, confined, unable to soar and fly, make for the skies? Ko gagi tuku ingwa, ko shwari tuku mama, ko alanka tuku papa, ko vaitia tuku fano, ko sayadri tuku maunga, ko waikato tuku awa, tina koto, tina koto, tina koto katoa. So my name is Gagi Vaidya and I'm a year 12 student at John Paul College, Rotoroa. I have been doing speech and drama for the past nine years now. I started doing it when I was in primary school and um, every step of the way I've done it and I've learned so much from it. And it's really been like a vital like asset in my life. I wrote my speech because I was um, inspired and motivated to raise my voice and I had seen racism play in my community and play um, in so many different places and I thought it was really unfair to just sit there and do nothing so I realized that it was a great opportunity and a great platform for me to um, just raise my voice and to talk about something that's really close to my heart. So my speech, it just, I, I would say it followed the basic speech format where you first like introduce the topic and then you go into more detail and then you sum it up at the end. But I also wanted to add some creative elements to it by um, using that emotive language and by also um, having that slam poem in there. And another thing I did was I talked about my personal experiences and I also talked about racism in the past. So uh, I talked about the roots of colonial colonialism in um, New Zealand and how that has left one group more disadvantaged compared to another. So I tried to just uh, um, look at all the different elements in a sense and like look at all the implications that racism has. And there's a lot of research that actually um, goes into it. So I started, I would say, a month beforehand and I would look at all these articles because there's so much out there when it comes to the topic of racism and that really helped. So I looked at RNZ, One News and all those um, like media platforms and I looked at like how, it, how it's there in our community and then I looked at the history of racism. So I looked at the dawn raids, I looked at colonialism, I looked at... Um, uh, like the um, looked at World War Two and all of that, and I also read um, some books on racism. So I read How to Be an Anti-Racist and um, No Country Woman by Zoya Patel. So I did a lot of research, and I think that helped me um, form an understanding and a basic outline of how my speech wanted to look like. When I wrote my speech, I definitely um, prese I presented it to a lot of places and that helped me build, have that self-confidence um, that what I was saying was actually reaching people, which is what the speech is supposed to be doing. And another way I prepared was I actually looked at all the videos and all the content on the Race Unity um, website because that helped a lot when it came to knowing what I could and couldn't do. When I first started it, I was an extremely shy, nervous um, nine-year-old. And I remember just like talking in front of my classmates was just a massive fear of mine. So I think it was perfect that my parents put me into this. It actually helped improve that. And it combated my fear of speaking in front of an audience. And so since then, I've done all the grades and I've done the competitions, the local ones in Rotorua. And I've also done Trinity. Um, and so like this whole journey has just been so profound and, has, and it has taught me so much about how to like communicate effectively and how to have that confidence. I think another thing that speech and drama also did is that they exposed me to a wide range of content. So for exams, for exams we have to prepare poems and characters and talks and it really helped me um, gain an in-depth understanding of like um, just different topics in general. 
And I remember last year I did the poem Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. And that's when I really, like, that's when I did um, a lot of research into racism and, like, the impacts of it. And that's when I realised I could do the Race Unity Speech Awards and I did it for the first time last year. And since then... Um, just the fact that I do speech and drama and the fact that I've done it last year and the fact that I can talk with so much conviction about this topic, I think, has led me to this spot where I did, um, where I was in the national finals. Oh, there's so much to that question. <laughs> uh, I would definitely say meeting like-minded rangatahi like myself who actually have an active interest into this cause and they want to make robust decisions on how we can actually um, have a world free of racism. Um, uh, and also when it came to the race unity competition, the second day we actually had the hui, which is where we would all sit around table and come up with solutions and ideas and things that we can implement in our own communities. And another th another person I do want to mention is Margaret Theron. So she is the president of the Multicultural Council of Rotorua. And she actually gave me many platforms before I gave my Race Unity Speech Award. So my experience on the day, thanks to her, was uh, just stress-free because I had... Um, given my speech to so many places and it really helped me ease into it and just uh fill it just say it with um just wholehearted devotion so she just definitely helped me when it came to uh going to nationals and presenting my speech there